Hi everyone, welcome back. In the second part of the lecture on directional derivatives and gradient vectors, we're going to look at finding the equation of a tangent plane to a surface, but we're going to do it in a way that utilizes gradient vectors. So for this first bit, it's perfectly fine if you think of a surface like a sphere, for example, x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals 1. So for a sphere like that, this is we are thinking of z as implicitly an implicitly defined function in terms of x and y. So we could find the tangent plane using methods from the chain rule section, the last section. We're going to see how we can find the tangent plane using ideas from this section and the gradient vector. So if you want to think of that as your example, you can go ahead and, and use that as your, your concrete example. So here's the idea. We've got some surface. Our surface is given by an equation of the form f of x, y, z equals k. So I can interpret that as this is a level surface. This is a level surface of the function capital F of three variables. What's the tangent plane at a particular point? The tangent plane is given by this equation here. f sub x times x minus x naught plus f sub y times y minus y naught plus f sub z times z minus z naught. This is what we're going to prove. Now, in some sense, we have already derived this. So uh, we're not learning anything new here in the context of, hey, this is a tangent plane. I didn't know that. No, we knew this was the tangent plane. But what we are going to do is we're going to estab establish this result in a slightly different way than we did before. So I will use the, the way we did before to just establish it here. So we could use, so we could show this, we could show this using implicit partial differentiation. This was section 14.5 on the chain rule. And there we would have got things like dz dx, that was negative f sub x over f sub z, and dz dy, that's negative f sub y over f sub z. So this would give us you know, z minus z naught is equal to the x partial times x minus x naught plus the y partial times y minus y naught. And so maybe I'll say this is the tangent plane. And then we can clear denominators. So I just clear, multiply through by f sub z, push everything to the right hand side. And so I'd get f sub x, x minus x naught, plus f sub y, y minus y naught, plus f sub z, z minus z naught is equal to zero. And that verifies the equation of the tangent plane. So we already knew this. We're, this is nothing new that we're stating here. We actually had this and we did an example of it in the last section. But what I want to do is I want to establish this result in a new way. And the reason I want to do it in a new way is because this gives us a way to use the gradient vector and its geometric properties, which is very powerful in moving forward in constructing things like these tangent planes. So it's giving us a, a new lens to look through this tangent plane. So how do we do that? So what we'll do is we'll let S be the surface that we're interested in. So that's F of X, Y, I'm sorry, capital F of X, Y, Z equal to zero, or equal to K, so arbitrary um, level surface in this case. So we've got our, our level surface and we're interested in finding the tangent plane at a particular point. So what we'll do is we'll let C be an arbitrary curve through the point x naught, y naught, z naught on S. So we've got C as this arbitrary curve 
through that point on S. And what I'd like to do is I'd like to find the tangent vector to that curve. So let's go ahead and do that. So what do we know about C being on the on level curve? Then we can parameterize it. We can parameterize C. So let's say C is equal to some parameterized curve R of T, which is given by X of T, Y of T, Z of T. And in particular, where R, I should say R is R of 0, R of 0 is the point in question, x0, y0, and z0. Okay, so there's our parameterization of our curve that's passing through this point on our surface, and I'd like to find the tangent vector to that one. So then we have that f of x of t, y of t, z of t equals k. Now I can differentiate through this. So we can differentiate using the chain rule. And when I differentiate, what I get is the derivative with respect to x times dx dt plus the derivative with respect to y times dy dt plus the derivative with respect to z times dz dt and that's equal to the derivative of k which is zero and so this means that the particular moment when t is equal to zero we have that the gradient of f at x naught y naught z naught dot r prime of zero is equal to zero. So that's telling me, let's think about what this is saying. I've got a curve on our surface passing through the point. This is the tangent vector to the curve at that particular point. This is the gradient vector to the surface at that particular point. And it says their dot product is zero. So this says that the gradient vector of f at x0, y0, z0 is perpendicular to the curve C at the point x0, y0, z0. Now remember, C was any curve. So it was an arbitrary curve through this point on S. So this says no matter how you come along the surface and pass through that point, x0, y0, z0, the tangent vector to the curve as you pass through that point is going to always be perpendicular to the gradient vector, no matter how you pass through that point. So let's look at a visual for this. I'm imagining I'm on a surface and I've got a point and it says no matter how I come through that point, no matter what curve I take, so here I'm just going to look at the various different curves that come about from taking planes that cross it. So no matter how I pass through that point, whatever curve I've got that passes through that point, so I'm thinking of those black curves there, the intersections of the planes in those various directions, the tangent vector to those curves, which is that orange line, or that orange vector, has to always be perpendicular to the gradient vector. So what that means is the gradient vector is perpendicular to, I'll move this plane a little bit, perpendicular to this green vector. That's the x partial, essentially, related to the x partial. It's also perpendicular to the red vector. So it's perpendicular to the plane that passes through or contains the red and the green vector, so I'll turn off these directions. In other words, the gradient vector has to be the normal to this plane because this plane, the tangent plane, is precisely the plane that contains all of these direction vectors. You see that orange vector is always in the tangent plane. 
And so what we've just found is that the gradient vector is a vector that's perpendicular to all these orange vectors. But the normal to the tangent vector, or the, sorry, the normal to the tangent plane also has to be a vector that's perpendicular to all these orange vectors. So that means the gradient vector should be in the direction which is the normal to the tangent plane. So that's what we're getting from this calculation. We have to read into it. We have to say we took any arbitrary curve that passed through the, the point on the surface and its tangent vector was always perpendicular to the gradient. So that means, so since this is true for any curve C on S through the point x naught, y naught, z naught. So gradient of f at x naught, y naught, z naught is the normal to the tangent plane. Or another way to say this is the tangent plane should be the plane with this property that all tangent vectors live in it. Tangent vectors being vectors that are tangent to a curve that passes through the point. So the tangent plane should be defined to be the plane that has all the tangent vectors living in it. And this tells us that, well, all tangent vectors are perpendicular to the gradient. So the gradient is the normal to that tangent plane. And so that verifies our result because this tells us that the gradient of f x naught, y naught, z naught, which is f sub x, f sub y, f sub z at the particular point, is the normal of the tangent plane. And once we know it's the normal to the tangent plane, we can very easily write down what the equation of the tangent plane is and that's what's written down above. There's the equation of the tangent plane, because we can read the normal vector right off of it. The normal vector is f sub x, f sub y, f sub z. So we'll scroll back down and say, therefore, the gradient is the normal to the tangent plane. So that's the geometric property that we have for the gradient. We already saw that the gradient was normal to level surfaces. We had that here or level curve, sorry, we already knew that the gradient for a function of two variables was a vector that was orthogonal to level curves. What we just established here was that the gradient is also a vector that's perpendicular to level surfaces. And again, it just followed from the chain rule. So it was pretty much the same idea as that previous one. So now let's see how we can use this. And we'll see how quickly it is or how quick we can be at computing a tangent plane using these ideas. So we've got a hyperboloid, x squared plus y squared minus z squared equals 1. We want to find the tangent plane at the point 1, 1, 1. So here we're thinking of the hyperboloid as the level surface of this function capital F, capital F of x, y, z. It's the level surface corresponding to that equal to 1. So I'm interested in finding the tangent plane. Well, I know what the normal to the tangent plane is. The normal is going to be the gradient at 1, 1, 1. So let's first work out the gradient. That is f sub x, f sub y, f sub z. So that would be 2x, 2y, negative 2z. We're interested in the particular case of the gradient at the point 1, 1, 1. And that's going to be 2, 2, negative 2. So we already have the normal vector to the surface. This is normal vector to surface at the point 1, 1, 1. So we already have that. If I go to my diagram here and I go 1, 1, 1, so 1, 1, 1, that's somewhere around here on our surface, and we've already got the normal vector. It's, one, it's 2 in the x direction, 2 in the y direction, and negative 2 in the z direction. So there's our normal vector to our surface. It's given by 2, 
2, negative 2. And that's all I need. I just need the normal vector and the point to find the tangent plane. So therefore we've got our tangent plane. Tangent plane is given by 2 times x minus the x-coordinate of the point we know, plus 2 times y minus the y-coordinate of the point we know, plus the partial, uh, the z-partial, which is negative 2, times z minus the z-coordinate of the point we know, and that's equal to 0. And so there's the equation of our tangent plane. Very quick to get the equation of the tangent plane, now that we have this idea of a gradient vector, and we know what its geometric properties are. Okay, so that gives us a way to construct the tangent plane to a surface which we're thinking of as a level surface, or an implicitly defined function giving our surface. Can we take these ideas and just apply them back to functions where z is equal to a function of x and y, and so a surface is just the graph of a function of two variables? The answer is absolutely, we can take these ideas and apply it to that. So what we do is we say, what happens in the case where we've got an explicitly defined function, z is a function of x and y? Well, think of it as the level surface of this function, f of x, y minus z. So in other words, I just rewrite this as f of x, y minus z equal to zero, and we're calling this capital F of x, y, z. And if I use my result above that says, hey, for implicitly defined functions or for level surfaces for this, cap this function capital F, I know what the tangent plane is. We can write it down. So what is our tangent plane? Well, it's going to be given by the gradient of F, that's the normal, and that's going to be the derivative of capital F with respect to X, that's just F sub X, the derivative with respect to Y, that's F sub Y, and the derivative with respect to Z, that's just negative 1. And so what's our tangent plane? Well, at the particular point in question, X naught, Y naught, Z naught, the tangent plane is going to be well, we'll look back up at our formula here because we're trying to show that this is consistent with the, the formula we had for tangent planes for explicit functions. This says f sub x, x minus x naught, f sub y, y minus y naught, f sub z, z minus z naught. So let's write that out. We have f sub x, big f sub x, times x minus x naught. So big f sub x, that's f little f sub x times x minus x naught plus f sub y times y minus y naught plus negative 1 times z minus z naught is equal to 0. So that's our tangent plane we get by thinking of it as a level surface. But then I could move this expression to one side of the equation and I get z minus z naught is equal to f sub x x minus x naught plus f sub y y minus y naught, and that's the equation we derived for the tangent plane way back in the earlier section for explicit functions. So it's just that this new thing, this new way of looking at surfaces as level surface and level surfaces and using the gradient um, for that function of three variables to construct the tangent plane, it's completely consistent with the way we did tangent planes for explicit functions. So that's a very nice very nice observation, and so that we can think of this as a way to construct tangent planes in the most general setting for not only explicit functions, but for functions which are defined implicitly by equations like the sphere x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals 1, or by equations like this hyperboloid x squared plus y squared minus z squared equals 1. All right, as a last example here, Let's see what we can do. We've got C is the curve given as the intersection of x, y, z equals 1 and x squared plus 2y squared plus 3z squared equals 6. Find the tangent line equation to C at the point 1, 1, 1. So C is this curve of intersection. So we've got this point, 1, 1, 1. We've got this curve of intersection. Maybe I'll put a comma here, and C is the curve of intersection of 
surface, let's call it S1, and this other surface S2. Because it's the curve of intersection, then I know it's a curve that lives on both S1 and S2. So I know that the vector that points in the direction of the curve has to be a tangent vector to the surface S1 at the point 1, 1, 1. It also has to be a tangent vector to the surface S2. But because it's a tangent vector to both S1 and S2, it's got to be perpendicular to the normal of S1. And it's got to be perpendicular to the normal of S2. So if I know the normal vectors to S1 and S2 at the point, I can take their cross product to get the vector that points in the direction of C. And so that's what we can do. We can work out the normal to S1 at 1, 1, 1. And we can find the normal to S2 at 1, 1, 1. How do we find those normals? Well, we just use the fact that these are level surfaces. In this case, our function f of x, y, z is x times y times z, whereas in this case, our function, we'll call it g of x, y, z, is given by x squared plus 2y squared plus 3z squared. So what is our normal to s1? This is going to be the gradient of f at 1, 1, 1. So what is our gradient of f, first of all? It's the partial with respect to x, the partial with respect to y, the partial with respect to z. And so at the particular moment we have in mind, which is at the point 1, 1, 1, then the gradient is going to be 1, 1, 1. What about the other piece? Well, there we want to know what the normal is to the surface S2. So we need to know gradient G. That's the X partial, the Y partial, and the Z partial. In particular, at the moment or the point in question, which is 1, 1, 1, this would be 2, 4, 6. So now we have two vectors that are perpendicular to the, equa or the, the curve C at the point 1, 1, 1. So the tangent vector to C at 1, 1, 1 is orthogonal to both the gradient of f at 1, 1, 1 and the gradient of g at 1, 1, 1. So therefore, it is in the direction given by their cross product. So we'll call this vector v, that's the direction of the, 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 the direction of the tangent line to the curve c. So it's the cross product of f at 1, 1, 1 and g at 1, 1, 1. So it's the cross product of, we'll use our, you know, our memory aid for computing cross products. So it's the cross product of 1, 1, 1 and 2, 4, 6. So that's going to be uh, 6 minus 4 is 2, and then it's 6 minus 2, which is 4, with an extra negative sign in front, so negative 4, and the last one is 4 minus 2, which is 2. So there is our direction vector, and so our tangent line to C at 1, 1, 1, is given by, so it's a line, I'll use L, it's L of T, passes through the point 1, 1, 1, and has a direction vector of 2, negative 4, 2. And so there is our tangent vector to that curve of intersection. So notice we found the tangent line to the curve of intersection, but we didn't actually have to find a parameterization for the curve of intersection. We built the tangent line off of the direction vector that we needed that line to go in, and that direction vector was the cross product of the normals to the two surfaces.
and we got the normals to those two surfaces by using their gradients because we were thinking of them as level surfaces. Alright, so that's it for this section. Thanks for watching.